Okay, this is the final video for us. So I've used this um, special silicon bonding thing in the pattern that they show in the manual. Um, so that's all been applied and uh, I've dabbed that round and then I've flattened it off with my finger so there's no high points at all. If there's a high point, it's going to squeeze. Now the important thing here was to show you how we lined up the crankshaft um, cog and the balancer shaft. I've got this locked and you'll find when it's locked that you've got this uh, indentation cast in pointing upwards and the two marked cogs I've highlighted with a yellow pen just to make them a bit clearer now at about the sort of um, 9.15 position. The crankshaft looking, this is upside down at the moment you appreciate, so it's TDC number one so the conrod in number four here is down, same as number one of course and what you're looking at is this triangle which is lined up with the fifth spline, I've marked that one in yellow from the wide spots, that's one, two, three, four, five, the fifth spline lines up with that triangle if you look down the centre. What happens when you drop this now over and engage it is that um, will slightly turn when the cog engages so don't expect that to line up perfectly after engagement the important thing is that the marks here um, will line up so that one tooth will be in between those two teeth that's what you need to check and I've relieved the back lash adjuster so that this is away from the crankshaft at the moment so if you'll allow me I'll put this on the tripod and finish off the rest <clears throat> just to point a couple of things out you've got to have a couple of bearings installed here which is the um, main bearing <clears throat> oh. yeah this is the clutch rod seal and its bearing those need to be installed so I've already primed this with oil on these bearings I'll just put a little bit more on there so we don't want it to start off dry this should be a molly bedenium disulfide oil and uh, if you fill up the grooves you're going to make sure that when this starts up until the oil pump can get round either side of the con rods that should weep into the bearings too and there's also um, uh, some holes in the crankshaft which you can fill up. I won't oil this side of the block because it's going to go upside down in a minute and I don't want it contaminating. So basically that is ready. I'll drop that over. Carefully inch it down. Make sure the cogs are engaging visually. I'm going to check that with a torch. And I can see that is engaged. So what I will do is zoom in for you guys. And you'll see, before I drop this down the last centimetre, hopefully you'll see what we want here. Okay, so you see the one tooth is engaged between the two on the balancer wheel. There she goes. So that is absolutely perfect now. It's not going to rattle and vibrate because it's the wrong location. Now I've got that correct and checked visually, I'm going to tap this down with a, a hammer, soft paste hammer of course, and uh, we're good to put the bolts in. So let's just zoom back out again. So evenly tap down both sides. Whichever side is the highest goes down first. That's beautiful. That's done. And now we can put our bolts back in. Um, on the bolts you've got six shorter ones and four longer ones. The shorter ones go inside where the oil goes. And the longer ones go on the outside. Now I haven't cleaned the oil off these, so they will slip okay. If you clean all of the oil off, you need to put the oil back on these bolts before you use them because the torque settings will be wrong. 
and then to save time what I'm doing and you have to follow the uh, tightening down sequence here um, which they give you in the manual which is free online if you look but it's four megabytes um, yeah so there's a tightening sequence here in the manual uh, basically you start in the middle and you work towards the outsides so what I'm doing here to save time I've got a electric drill driver and I put it on the screwdriver setting with a very low torque initially and wind all those bolts down starting with number one two and follow the sequence here so three is opposite now idea. So when I've done all of these 10 bolts I will increase the torque and then finally I will put on the recommended torque with the torque wrench and then I will do the angle. So okay so now I've done this um, with the drill driver with a bit of torque in sequence. We're now obviously going to be doing the uh, torque wrench so I've set this for 20 newton meters and uh, basically you go round in sequence from number one which is this one I recommend to start with that's it two three spreading outwards Now, if you're clever, you go and recheck the the um, torque hasn't changed in the middle. Uh, just a little bit more there. That's fine. I want them all exactly the same before I do the required 120, 150 degree move, I should say. Right, that's great. So they're all ready. Now you do the 150 degrees, which you have something on here, but... Basically, you want to start at vertical. That's 90 degrees, that's 180, so it's about here. So, in sequence, don't let the ratchet slip. That's it, it's about 30 degrees short of vertically down. There we go. That's two, three up here. Don't get mixed up, I'll do them twice. This is four. Then five. And six. Then seven. Hold that. And eight. And then nine and ten. Turn to the right angle. One more. Oh, yeah, you have to brace this a bit. fine okay so we've done now the reason that I'm leaving the video running is I want to show you that you can rotate this sharpener I've left the um, magneto on it makes it a bit easier to to turn 
But here's a question for you. How do you check if those timing cogs are synchronised with the engine in the bike? Can, if you are worried about a vibration noise, being the balancer gear, being misassembled, you'll see it, that this one is correctly assembled. See the one gear between the two? How are you going to know? And the answer is, what you could do is you can actually get this pin in, take out the blanking bolt and put your special pin in from underneath, because this is upside down, until it engages in that tip. You could rotate and see it with a torch if you're very, very accurate, or an endoscope that they sell for smartphones. Now, until you see that hole, and you'll, you'll get it lined up. Now, you should find... If that pin is in place, where is the actual alignment of your crankshaft? And the answer is this. If you look, that mark is slightly looking from this side, anti-clockwise, to the spline. How much? And it's about half, it's about one third of a tooth anti-clockwise from where it lines up. So if you get your crankshaft into this position, okay, and I'll do it with top dead centre as well in a minute, um, you'll then have that pin in. And so the question is, where are the pistons? And you've got, it's not quite top dead centre, one and four, but it's close on it. I wonder if there's a mark on this. So if I'm looking at this magneto, this is slightly clockwise. I can't see any marks here to help you guys. Ah, there's a pin here. So there's a... Oh, I think that was the balancing robot has done that. So there's a flat. I'll just look around for you. OK, guys, here's your answer. I've turned the engine upside down now so you can see where the piston is when this pin is engaged and it turns out it's exactly top dead centre. Now the best way to find this is if you took out a spark plug from number one or number four and I know that's not easy if the engine's in the bike um, but um, you can you can do that and at that point this pin will go straight in. If it doesn't it suggests that the balancer wheel has got the wrong synchronisation but I'll just demonstrate. If I loosen this out and then I rotate my crank, you'll see the dial here. Yeah, it's measuring the deflection. I'll zoom in for you. So if I move these pistons up and down, you see where it settles here, at the highest position, which is top dead centre. OK, I can now get this pin in, and it locks it. So that pin is basically a TDC marker if the cogs are engaged in the correct position. The other way of doing this is to take the sump off, which is a separate casting, and you could look up, maybe, with a torch or a mirror, or I would suggest one of these endoscopes that you can get for about five quid off of eBay, and you'll be able to see if the painted marks are meshed between the two cogs from underneath. When, when you've got this pin in and top dead centre number one. You may need to do a full revolution. I haven't counted the teeth, but um, possibly in it's every second revolution or something. I'm not sure. But those painted marks should come up at top dead centre. And certainly when this pin is in its hole, uh, I think probably this rotates twice for every rev of the crankshaft, which is going to be quite a high RPM really, isn't it? But there you go. That's how to set your... Um, your balancing gears mesh of teeth when you're assembling the engine. So I'm going to carry on now and put the top bolts through this and I've got the gear, and gear bearing, output shaft bearing to fit in as well. And incidentally, a little trick with that, that was a um, really tight fit. So currently that bearing for the output or sprocket shaft is in my freezer and it's a warm day here in end of July. So the difference in expansion metal will make that really easy to fit. I tried drifting it in and it was stiff and I didn't want to damage the castings. So I thought there's no rush here. I'll put that in the freezer and it will shrink it down a couple of thousandths of an inch 
that will go in straight away. So I hope this helps you guys out. If you've got some rattling noises about, you're concerned about balancing shaft, synchronization, etc. And you know what to do with this. Just follow the manual. You put a screw, you loosen this off and you adjust with the dots as they say, and then basically by ear. If it's a bit of a whining noise, it's too tight. If it's a bit of a rattly noise, it's too loose. So you start off with the required position. And then when you've got your happy thing, you tighten that up and that can be done safely. I don't think if you put this into any situation it's going to cause it to jump a gear so don't be too frightened. From what I could see it would be impossible to jump out of alignment with the teeth once the crankcase is bolted together like this. Okay guys thanks that's all for me now thanks for watching and if you're wondering why this is on the Vire Engines channel it's because I've only got one channel but uh, hopefully it inspire you guys if I can rebuild this superbike engine then uh, I'm more than competent to do the other sorts of engines as well. All right, bye.